Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. I'm about to get stuck into a heavyweight session. My first proper session with this raw Shung Pua. This is the Heaven Surveyor. I'm gonna of course be telling you everything you need to know about this tea and we're gonna be tasting it, but let's first admire the artwork by Celine. The Chinese crested dog lying in a meadow in the spring or summer, staring up at the heavens, which is why we call it the Heaven Surveyor. The eagle-eyed amongst you will see that, as well as you know, the required sunshine uh, apparel, which is the, the, the shades and of course the sun cream, uh, the Chinese crested dog has also got a notepad where he's making calculations as he observes the heavens. So this is the Heaven Surveyor. I'm gonna be talking about a little bit more about why we've included this sort of element in the tea a little bit later on. But um, once again, uh, a great piece of artwork by Celine, if I do say so myself. Right, let's open up this cake so you can see it. I'm gonna put this one to the side. I've got another one here, which I'm gonna open up. And we're gonna be talking to you about this cake, which is um, a special cake for me because it comes from an area that I've been looking to source from for quite some time. This is a Man Song Pua. This is a Dashu Pua, so this is old tree material, around 100 years old. Now, the, the producer's saying I can say older than that, it's more like 150, but I'm being conservative here. This is at least 100 year old tea trees from Man Song village, which is in Ibang, near um, Iwu in Mengla County. We're gonna be talking about the history of this area and why it's such an important area and why I really wanted to source tea from it. So we're gonna scope it, season, this is April 2021. So this is uh, last year's tea, I'm speaking to you from 2022. If you've been following along with our Pua releases, you probably realized that we now like to hold back teas. We release some of them when they're fresh because we feel that they're prime and ready to drink right now. For example, Young Gushu, and there will be some other 2022 releases coming shortly. But oftentimes we find that the very, very young teas that have been freshly pressed tend to need a little bit of time to settle down. Um, the, they tend to be a little bit too astringent at the beginning and the finish tends to have not developed quite enough yet. So they're shorter and a little bit more um, taken over by those very green notes. And I find that just letting them settle really makes them ready for tasting properly. Um, and so that's why we tend to hold back our releases a little bit. So this is April, 2021. The cultivar, I've written on the wrapper that this is a Daejeong variety because that's a very broad sort of term for this larger leaf variety. But Yibang is very famous for mixed cultivars. Uh, so uh, Mansong uh, village is in Ibang and Ibang um, is known for smaller leaf varieties, uh, medium leaf varieties. So it's sort of a mixed variety and mixed bag. And you can see here that there's definitely um, a little bit of a smaller, finer look to these leaves. Origin, this is from Man Song Village in uh, Mangala County, relatively close to Iwu on the eastern side of Yunnan, close to the Laos border. Um, and it's a, an area that has so much history. It used to be um, an imperial tribute area. So the tea produced in this area um, in the Qing dynasty was reserved for the emperors. You hear that a lot from a lot of different teas, but the, this was the case that there were certain areas that only the tea could only be sent to the royal courts. Um, and it, and it has, it's an area with a long, long history dating back to the Ming dynasty. One of the, probably the, one of the first true poor hubs or poor producing areas of Yunnan probably sort of, um, gave fame to Iwu. Actually, you know, this is a predecessor to, uh, to Iwu. Iwu, Iwu being a very famous area now, uh, known as the queen of Pua, but Mansong is like the predecessor of it. It, 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 is the, it is the original village which gave fame to this area, this part of Yunnan and the teas that it produced. And there's a lot of sort of, I'm trying to understand the history of it because it certainly is true that a lot of the old tea trees 
were burnt down or burnt down. Now, uh, my contacts in Yunnan say that this was done on purpose. I'm still trying to understand the reason, but it seems that um, the uh, tribute teas continued and then the government started requ requesting more and more tea from Mansong. And what I'm being told, I, I can't verify this for sure, but what I'm being told is that the villagers just got so fed up with these continuous demands of more and more tea from their area, um, probably without a commensurate increase in price, maybe maybe there was, there was a, a price haggle, that the villagers burnt down, sadly, a lot of the ancient Arba Gushu tea trees. And so um, whether or not that story is true, there, it is certainly true that there are very few proper Gushu 200 plus year old tea trees that can be found in Mansong. Um, and these tea trees are old, Dashu we're calling it, 100 plus years, um, so which is still really hard to find in Mansong. Uh, my uh, producers are saying that we could probably say it's more close to 150, but I think safer to say 100 years estimated age on these tea trees. So Mansong village, very, very, very famous village. You may not hear about it in the same ways that you hear about uh, Lao Banjiang and uh, Bingdao and Shigui and Iwu and all of those famous villages. But that's a lot to do with the fact that this village is more of a historical famous area and there's less produced in Mansong and those areas, the other areas that I just talked about have, you know, really sort of built up their reputation. Whereas Mansong, um, there's not that much tea coming out of Mansong um, in comparison um, to, you know, Iwu in general. Uh, so I've been trying to find Mansong tea for a long time. I've tasted a a, a few, but not, I have to say, not a huge amount of Mansong. I've probably tasted, I don't know, over the years, five to 10 samples of Mansong. This is the one that really captured my attention and I had to bring it to you. And I will say that it is an expensive tea, but the price that we're selling at online is truly a bargain for Mansong old tree material. I've tried to make this as affordable as I possibly can for everyone out there because these are very, very hard teas to find. 100 year old plus tea trees from Mansong village usually commands a much higher price. So I think it's a pretty good bargain even though it is um, a, a fairly hefty price tag. Uh, picking, on, picking and processing is going to be about and up to three to four leaves um, and it's going to go through the standard raw pua process and elevation is around 1000 meters. You can see the look of these leaves. Uh, you can see that it's developed a little bit of age, one year from pressing, and uh, it would have been a lot greener. And especially with these small leaf varieties, I find that, you know, especially with them, you need to make sure you temper the um, astringency and bitterness, which is one of the prizes of these teas, similar to Lao Banjang, is it's going to have bite, it's going to have um, a little bit of um, push and pull and is going to, you know, uh, be one of those teas, which is probably very different from Iwu teas, which are very easy drinking. This is going to have a bit more oomph to it, um, but the body sensation is also going to be a little bit more oomphy too. Um, and yes, it, when it's very, very green, I, I find that it's not really showcasing the best of the tea. Right, let's dive in. So I have tasted this tea sort of maybe since it arrived, I've tasted it maybe about two times or three times and I've loved it. I felt that I just wanted to hold it, hold it a little bit. Um, I tasted it about two weeks ago and I felt it was ready. Um, and so I've given myself a little break now. Um, so I'm gonna sort of come at it as fresh as I possibly can. But like I say, our warehouse is a little treasure trove and uh, I have, you know, we've got teas that are in different stages where I'm just sort of making sure that when they're released, they are really ready. So I'm going to estimate around seven to eight grams here. Let's see how I did. 6.6. .6. Yeah, not bad. Did okay. So yeah, I did about seven, seven and a half grams. Okay, I'm gonna leave this cake here. We're gonna heat up this guy one. And let's get stuck into this tea. 
You can see the leaves. Let's quickly just look at the leaves again. Yeah, um, they've definitely um, darkened, a little bit more plummy, but you can hopefully see that it is a, a little bit more smaller pickings compared with, or smaller looking pickings compared with your sort of standard poor picking. Heat up this guy one, and we'll dive in for our nose dry leaf. Elephant goes back here. And in goes these leaves. Heaven Surveyor, Mansong Dashu, Shangpua, April 2021. I am getting a ton of fruit, actually. Um, I'm getting raisins. I'm getting a green melon. Um, I'm getting frozen orange juice. That's a very childhood memory. Um, you used to get orange juice in blocks. I guess they still sell those, but in the 80s, that was a real thing, frozen orange juice. Um, brown sugar, sweet, fruity, a little bit zesty. So you get the, the zest of those oranges, but then the, the raisins and the brown sugar. Uh, floral as well. The flowers are very heavy, heavy flowers. Nothing zesty, really, really deep. Maybe Lily of the Valley. Um, there's a, a, a flower, <clears throat> a white flower, and I think it's, I can't remember uh, like the common name, but it's something like Steph, Stefan, Stephanotis or Stephanotis or something like that. Um, very, very heady, deep, sweet, white flower smell. I'm also getting that summertime feel like, uh, I've said this before, but, but sun cream and um, freshly sort of summer skin, you know, that sort of uh, fresh sweat, essentially, like a little bit salty, but um, yeah, like beach skin. You can see the leaves in here. Let's give them a rinse. <clears throat> Also picking up a little strawberry note, I think, in there. It has a, a, a real sweetness about it. Fruity. And when it was just pressed, it had those notes, but the greenness of the tea dominated the, the, the aroma and the smell, which is just normal. That's just the way it is. It's, it's not anything about the tea. There are some teas where that greenness somehow complements the, the, the overall character of the tea, um, and there are some which I think don't, and this is one that I didn't think complemented it, so let it die down. That's, you know, the beautiful thing about uh, Pua, is it's, it's under your control as long as you know the parameters and what you can do. All right, let's have a sniff of the wet leaf. Um, okay, um, definitely strawberry jam. Um, in fact, a ton of it. That frozen orange juice is coming through as well. It's got a deeper note to it. It's also got like, um, like cooked apples, um, honey, lemon as well, like lemon and honey as a, you know, very classic sort of drink if you're feeling a bit ill. Um, so the fruit notes continue, fruit and sweet. So the lemons, the oranges, cooked apples, it reminds me a little bit of um, uh, orange gummy candies, orange starburst, and then the sweet, the raisins, the honey, <clears throat> and the, the brown sugar. And then uh, there is a definite woody, woody note as well, uh, like a pine forest after the rain. So very, um, you're deep in this, in this, in this forest, but it, it's very fragrant because of the pine and because of the, the rain. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's got a lot more going on and I wanna talk about the minerals in it, but I think we'll talk about that when we do the tasting because it smells uh, also quite rocky. Like, so it's not just 
after the rain in a forest, but also with rocks as well. So sort of, yeah, hot rocks that are wet. Got a real mineral note to it. Right, we're gonna brew this for about 25 seconds or so. And I get to really experience this Mansong tea for <clears throat> what is, you know, the first proper time, proper session. Every time I've been dipping into it, I've been taking a few grams and just sort of tasting it in a small guy one. So yes, I've been tasting it, but I didn't feel like I got the full, the full experience. Color is a lovely apricot gold color. <clears throat> leaves are becoming more green as you can see okay here we go let's uh, deal with the texture first smaller leaf varieties uh, generally are going to be a little bit less thick than from my experience anyway than your really large leaf varieties. I would class this as, actually for the first infusion, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty thick. I would say it's medium right now. Um, I don't expect it to go into sort of Iwu territory in terms of thickness. I expect this to be, and it is already, a very, very physical and um, invigorating tea uh, in the mouth and on the body. Mm. It's got power, it's got potency. You drink it and you feel this sort of afterburn of woof, this energy just sort of coming out of it. It's definitely an energetic tea. Uh, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Let's first focus on the taste. <clears throat> so I'm getting flowers. Sweet, white flowers. What I talked about before, I'll throw gardenia in there as well. Mm. I also think there's a creaminess to it. Like a little bit like those raisins are in a bread and butter pudding. Uh, if you've ever had English dessert bread, bread and butter pudding, then you'll know it's got those, those soft squidgy raisins amongst the bread and the sort of custard. Um, and that is the taste that I'm getting as well. It's there in the background. Predominance though is the fruits, the fruits are more um, sweet and gentle now than on the smell, more like apricots and persimmon. So you're getting that sort of sweet, creamy, fruity stone fruit. Mm, I'm getting um, that um, little hit of bitterness, which is exactly what you're looking for in what, what I'm looking for in these kinds of expensive, um, you know, uh, uh, forests uh, is that little hit of like a, a sort of tonic water bitterness that then dissipates. And that bite is very, very important. I'm getting um, a, like a sherbety effervescence in the mouth as well. Let's talk about the minerals. The minerals are there. They're very... Um, how to describe them, they're, they're like, uh, it's not like an isotonic drink, like a Gatorade or anything like that. They're more potent than that. It's, but it's not quite salt water. It's not like, like it's not like a saline. It's sort of in between. It, it, it feels like, a, it just feels like a, 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 a drink that's really rich in electrolytes. It feels hydrating on the one level, but also very, very mineral in the mouth and I'm picking up even a slight touch of um, like, again, holiday, like beach air, not, not nothing to do with the sea in terms of like sea smell, but the saltiness in the air, you know, when you're, when you're um, having a holiday by the beach or if you are lucky enough to live near the coast. 
the saltiness is it, again like it reminds me of sort of salty summer skin which is why we really sort of wanted this um this character to be really in the summer you know with the shades and the sun cream it does have a little sun cream sort of um floral note to it as well <clears throat> but i'm trying to um it's it's difficult for me to explain the joys of these kinds of expensive teas unless you've had them yourself because in many ways very similar to lao banjang which i actually drank last night some lao banjang <coughs> so it's sort of very fresh in my head it's the sense in the mouth that is the absolute winning element of these teas the taste is great the taste is balanced and um, subtle and it's sort of little um, elements of the taste just pop their head out as you sort of go through the session. So I'm picking up more strawberry again, but now it's instead of strawberry jam, it's moved to sort of strawberry candy. So those orange candies have moved to strawberry candies. Um, the flowers again, oh, I'm getting um, uh, um, like a sweet, sweet cream like just sweet sweet um yeah sweet whipped cream um in the the finish as well as um those floral notes like the lilies of the valley etc so there's lots of different flavors that are popping up um but the the real sort of joy of these teas uh is the sense of potency in the mouth this um the, the, the sense in the mouth of this tea is one that is uh, hydrating, tingly, rising and evaporating um, like it's got like a, a, an energy that just is very light that sort of just is it's and it's not the same as vaporous. Because when I talk about vaporous teas, I'm talking about teas which sort of leave a very dense uh, flavor fog in your mouth. This is more, it's not about the taste. It's about this sort of rising uh, energetic tingle. Uh, and, and I really equate that sense in the mouth with being the sense of very, very sought after teas like Banjang, like Bingdao. Um, you might talk about it as being very mineral rich because I think that, that that's sort of a, a flavor descriptor or a descriptor, it's not really a flavor, but a descriptor which sort of describes this, this feeling in the mouth of pulling, uh, cooling, rocky, moving to sort of um, evaporating, um, sort of refreshing, you know, in, in, in a way that it's different from taste. All right, let's see what the second fusion is like and I'll try to piece that together a little bit better. Oh, thickened up, apricots, loads of apricots and persimmon. The fruit is coming through. Actually, the fruit is much more dominant than I remember in the Maocha. The Maocha, clearly from the cover you can see was a lot of flowers. And you can therefore sort of, um, you know, so you can see from the transformation from the visual element of the very young tea to what I'm drinking now, this has moved much more into those apricots and persimmon, um, sweet and creamy fruits. Ooh, a little tiny, tiny touch of coconut is in there as well. So like that sun cream could have a little bit of coconut in there as well. Um, as I said, the, the, the mouthfeel is everything though. Uh, I'm getting a touch of those little dry bitters. Um, it's this interplay of bitter and sweet, again, which is really, which really manifests itself in these very sort of high ticket teas from these very famous areas that have a lot of history um, in, the, in the production and in the soil. So, a touch of bitters moving to a very um, 
persistent, like never-ending, continuous release of juicy apricot sweet saliva. So it really feels like it's 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 um giving your mouth a lot of juiciness, but not in the same way like some puertis when you drink it, it's like a flood of juiciness and then it stops. This is just like just continuous. You feel like, or I feel like, these minerals have really are really laying themselves down on my tongue, around the, the, my cheeks, and down my throat, and I'm going to get a very, very long, um, not just aftertaste, but mouthfeel afterwards. You can see the thickness of these, of the liquor. Definitely moved into sort of medium thick, close to thick. Um, Mixed leaf variety, younger leaf. I'm getting much more oomph, much more of that zingy young leaf uh, feel to the mouth sensation. Okay. Let's smell the empty Gong Bay. Those minerals, how do you describe those minerals? A lot of controversy around mineral. Can you taste mineral? I think you can, or at least I think that we all have an understanding of when I say it tastes like rocks or it tastes like, you know, slate. I think that you have a, a memory or, or, or a sense or an imagination of what that might be. Because, you know, it sort of comes from the smell, right? The smell of, of rocks, of hot rocks is, has a very definitive smell. It might be a combination of, of rock plus seawater plus sun, but there's something about that smell which is present in this uh, tea. Uh, smell of the empty Dong Dao Bay. Uh, a bit creamier than I thought it would be. Uh, so I'm getting um, I want to say like coconut sugar. So it's it's sweet, but it's not like brown sugar. It's a little bit lighter and has a slight more um, plant-like sweetness, if you know what I mean. And a little bit... Like toffee. It's a little bit buttery, very sort of toffee-like, uh, but still got this... Herb plant herbaceousness to it. Um, uh, Lily of the Valley is there. Persimmon is there. Um, ooh, what was that? I think that's going back to the green melon. I'm picking up a little melon sweetness as well. Um, a, a tea which is going to be shifting in terms of its um, tasting notes and it really commands your attention as it sort of shifts in flavor and you get all of these lovely little notes just sort of popping up and 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 showing themselves but I want to focus on body sensation because that's a big big part of these high ticket teas so I'm gonna I'm already feeling it but I'm gonna have um probably three more infusions I'm in infusion number two now so I'm probably gonna have three more infusions and I'll come back and we'll see how I'm feeling. I'm brewing up the fifth infusion here. Still got a lot of strength about it. You'll probably get 12 to 15 good infusions out of this, and then you can keep going. This is a very, very potent tea, very, very strong tea. Um, before we talk about body sensation, which is immense, I want to say that the mouthfeel, the aftertaste, the finish in my mouth is glorious, super fresh. <clears throat> Remind you know, just is is reminds me of of, of frozen orange juice um, and apricot. So I'm getting that zing, that slight citrus note of frozen orange juice. And I don't know, but frozen orange juice just has a different sort of note compared to fresh orange juice in terms of it, its taste and apricot sweet apricot very very juicy very very fresh really really enjoyable finish um now let's talk about the body sensation because as i said it is a very very unique and potent body sensation 
This has a, it has a heating energy, it has a rising energy, but that rising energy isn't sort of like rising to like a heady sort of feeling. It actually brings about a sort of lightening lifting as if you're sort of being carried along a little bit. And very, very key is this sense of clarity in the mind. Um, whilst being uh, creative and sort of lateral, it just feels very performance enhancing in terms of your brain, which is why the that little Chinese crested dog, I'm not gonna get this wet, I'll just hold it here, um, has uh, is staring up at the heavens and sort of making observations and writing um, down um, some sort of mathematical equations uh, uh, about what uh, he is observing up in the heavens. And, and that's what we felt when we first uh, drank this tea, the Mao Cha, that it has a really sort of clarifying focus in the mind. I can imagine it being well, it is going to be my go-to tea when I want to sit and I really want to do some problem solving or think about, you know, um, uh, uh, um, yeah, some sort of task that needs to be done that requires my focus and maybe requires me to think a little bit laterally and a bit creatively in order to find more efficient ways to solve a problem. This tea, for me, has that feel to it, which is why I was so determined to sort of try to incorporate that in the artwork with Celine. And as I said, it's not um, a feeling that um, that I get with a lot of puertis. Yes, puertis can be invigorating, energizing, and yes, they can certainly help you get on with your work. Um, you know, that's all true, but this has a distinct sort of clarifying feeling in the mind that I can't remember with other Pua teas. And I'm not sure if this is a distinctive character of Mansong teas. I haven't tasted enough to really be able to give you that um, uh, as a sort of generalization, but it definitely has this really rising, lifting, lightening, clarifying focus to it. Let's look at the leaves. <clears throat> you can see they're a lot greener now and um, Yes, you've got large leaves like this one here, but even their large, the large leaves look more like medium uh, leaves to me um, compared with a lot of the other Dai Yajong uh, pickings of poor out there. So this is 100 year old plus tea trees, but from mixed cultivar, from, from um, cultivars that are a little bit smaller leaf and mixed up leaf. And that is what gives it I think such an interesting character in terms of its sort of shift and complexity in the mouth and on the body sensation. There you go. One last look at the cover, the heaven surveyor. Staring up at the heavens, the Chinese crested dog, a tea which uh, we've been trying to source for a while, Mansong village, and finally we have it on our shelves. Check it out if you're interested in experiencing this very historic poor village in China. That's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you're in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.